Hi there, this is uh, a bit about uh, my data list for the commons of Summer War 2nd Edition. Uh, I had one uh, previous, but now with Avians and Close released, uh, I wanted to do an update to it. Uh, I've changed also the opinion on several commons uh, that were already released before. Uh, if you want to just see the data list, I'm going to put a link in the description to uh, the uh, tire maker link. Also, I think if you just want to see the opinion of many players, knowing SW Zone or Summer Wars Zone, the competitive site for Summer Wars, now we have a feature where people can rank units uh, from us in that top 10 or something like that. Uh, so that, that's very useful if you just want to, to see uh, how other, an easy way to see how other people value units. But uh, the idea of this video is just to talk about why I think every unit is uh, as good as I think it is, or as bad as I think it is. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to talk about... I'm going to start with uh, Ticket Match Analyst because I think it's going to be the more cont more controversial one. Uh, I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to say that I didn't think about the position of every common. I'm going to kind of think a little as I go. But yeah, yeah, I know that's going to be controversial because many people will think Mash and us, uh, it's, 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 uh, it belongs to A, and maybe some people will think it's Iger. Uh, I don't think like that, obviously. That's why I, I think uh, B tire fits better. I think I think it's a little lacking. I mean, it fulfills the role it has to do, but uh, it has a little too little life. And if you're not going to use its ability, which is not as easy to use, it's not a super versatile ability, uh, it's very hard to get value. I mean, when you use it, it's not like super great. Uh, I know some people we compared the Kilmachinus to the Border Archer because they're kind of similar. They could both kind of trade like a movement for an attack. I just think that kind of ability is better in a ranged unit. Uh, also, I think uh, the, the, the Border Archer has the option to just uh, boost the unit on different turns uh, by different sources. So, yeah, I, I don't think the machine is, is as good as the Border Archer. Yes, it has some other uses. Sometimes you want to trade uh, an attack for a movement. And uh, that's a good point. But I don't think it compensates the weakness of having this kind of ability in a melee unit. So overall, I think, yeah, it's kind of, Guild Machine is kind of weak. It's still a useful unit, as all the uh, tire units are. But yeah, that's where I think it belongs. Uh, next unit is is the guild gunner uh some people that have uh hear me talk about it i think uh, i think uh, it's going to strike to us i think it's one of the best units really so far in the game i think it's crazy good uh, uh the reason is just the ability to if it will be like this cost uh, and this stats and when you play it it's going to force a unit uh, a friendly unit one or two spaces it's already good enough it just doesn't need to do anything else and it's still a good unit the problem is you're going to do it first you can do it before atta another unit attacks or after right because it's when this unit attack and the second thing is it's the obvious one you can do it every turn and despite the low life uh the, the ability allows you to kind of um I love you to survive more than you should. I mean, you, you can keep a gunner alive a lot of time. You can use this ability a lot. I and mean, when you compound all that, you have, in my opinion, one of the strongest units released so far in Summer World. I think this unit alone makes cloaks very scary. I, I'm kind of scared. I've said, uh, I've said in a few places, I'm scared for the power of cloaks. And the reason I'm scared is this, this unit. This unit is super strong easily. But I fear if someone learns to use them very well, it can be unfair. Or I don't think it, it reached that point yet. Uh, so I still think it's a mess, but it, it doesn't deserve a, a higher place. And as you see, a kind of spoiler. It kind of spoiled the fact that I don't think any unit is going to reach as, as rank. And I think this is one of the best uh, units in the game right now. The the next unit is going to be the sniper, which as you're going to see, this is a very divisive uh, faction. So I, that's why I decided to start with them because I'm going to put the sniper on C. 
Uh, many people saw me complain that I, I, I think it's kind of weak. I, I'm concerned that the unit's not only weak, it's weird, right? It's a sniper that you want the ability to shut through units and you can hide it behind units. So he has a, a lot of... The, the best thing about, his, in my opinion, one of the best thing about this ability is allow you to save, do safe shots. With, with three life and only costing one, you, you really don't care that much about that. And that's weird, but... Or the problem is it doesn't do more than attack if you think about it, right? And you know that's for two. If all your unit's going to do is attack, and all you can do is attack for two, I'm not very impressed. Yeah, sure, you can choose better your targets, but I don't think that's enough to compensate. Overall, I think the sniper is a little lacking. Uh, and because of that, I think it's a C tire. I think you sh insurance shouldn't play this unit. Um Shiny when I play it in close, it's mostly because you're going to add uh, the cannon uh, power up, which I think uh, I think is a good reason. I mean, it's a good target for the cannon because you can do safely. Then you have three dice, very safe and very hard to attack. And second, because you have blocks. And yes, I mean, any ability, no matter the cost, is good if you can copy it enough times with blocks. So there is that. But uh, for that reason, you can cost... You can cost Two more magic, and you're still going to use it because you can copy it with locks. Um, so yeah, there is that. And finally, it's the bandit. The bandit. Uh, I think it's a it's a very well balanced uh, unit. I'm going to just put it on A. Uh, Cloaks use it. Uh, I mean, the fact is that Kotsura has three life. It's enough to just put a unit on E. That 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 means you have one of the best. Uh, uh, life, uh, life, uh, rates in the game, and just it doesn't. That really doesn't matter at this point. I, I think uh, the climber is kind of in the same area. The fact that they also have good abilities makes them, uh, yeah, that's what makes them balanced. Uh, despite it has two abilities, both abilities are not that relevant. But again, it doesn't matter. You know, it has zero cost for life, and that's all you need. And its abilities are sometimes, especially gang up. Gang up often hits. For quite a bit so you can convince me I, I was i was kind of going to put it here but overall i think it's fine I, I i think it's fine but you can convince me it's better than that so that's with the close i'm going to jump to the new uh faction um i want to start with with, with the core unit of the of the avians which is the steward um so where i put that steward the steward i also think is an a um, a little below to bandit. I think this is a very solid unit. It does what it's supposed to do. The stats are very good, and when you have the stats, kind of like the bandit, when you have the stats, you need a strong ability to be balanced. But um, yeah, worth it. It's not really that strong, despite it seems so. Uh, because in the avians, because it's they have so much mobility. Uh, yeah, I mean in the avians, this uh, this unit is not not like super crazy strong. You need you need to do a lot. To trigger Worthy, uh, and, and a lot of puzzle. But overall, I mean, it doesn't matter because they have such good stats. And the ability is good enough to keep uh, the steward into a tire. Not not much to talk about the steward already. Uh, the sentinel. I think. Uh, oh, where where is this? Uh, yes, here. Uh, it's also balanced. Um. I mean, at first, I, I was thinking that maybe it's not that balanced, it's a little weak, because often you play the Sentinel, uh, we, we, uh, you, you're noticing a, a pattern right now in the tire A, where uh, every unit has very good stats. And yeah, when you have very good stats, you don't need a super strong ability. It's a it's not always relevant. Uh, but it's relevant enough for this kind of stats, right? I mean, you will see in a lot of matches, what it does is... is, is, is Pretty strong actually. When you play against the breakers, when you play against Valdaria, you can push it. Um yeah, I think I think it's as strong as ability needs to be to be balanced. It's a very solid unit. And yeah, the stats allow you to even be useful uh when the ability is not relevant, but it's relevant a lot more than one would think. Uh yeah, I think it's a balanced unit. I'm very happy with this unit as it is. The sage. I'm going to put the Sage on the Ace class. Uh, I'm not overly decided with this unit. Again, 
Uh, the stats are fine. Uh, classic one cost for two, three. I think the ability is super strong on a vacuum. But I'm going to be honest, when I play the games, it doesn't feel as strong. Despite, I think the paper is stronger than... What I think is happening is... Um, they, uh, let's make it clear. I think... His, uh, the ability, the ability to, to boss a unit, like... Sage can add value to the game during the whole game without ever putting itself at risk, and that's very powerful. Ability, right also allows you to just add more power to the same flank right uh so the, those those two things combined are very powerful but um yeah it requires a lot of positional movement that's very hard to get value from and it only boosts uh really most of the time commons so yeah it's, it's very 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 hard to get uh that much value from that so I'm not decide. I, I, I'm not sure if it's a balance unit with it's slightly OP, and that's where a plus is right in. Right, it's a unit that I think is balanced, but my VOP. I don't mean, know. I'm still I'm still learning about it, and I'm not sure. Uh, it's definitely a scary unit. Uh, that's that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, and then finally the diver, which is the last unit. The Diver is a very circumstantial unit, it's a very utility unit, and I'm going to put it uh, where I think that fits, which is C. Uh, I'm not, I'm never super happy about playing the Diver, I kind of play it, I and mean, when it's like an optimal situation to play the Diver, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay. And a lot of times you can't really find good value for it, so I think, I think the Diver is kind of lacking, and that's why it's on C right now. Uh, I think it's better than the sniper, but it's still in this area where I'm not. I'm not like like I said. Right, yeah, C is now useless, right? It's, it has uses. Sometimes I'm very happy that you have the diver over the unit when you have that one life unit that you want to finish off, but you don't you don't have the attack to kill it, and you're still left with a choo choo body. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, obviously diving is a useful ability, but yeah, yeah. Despite all this, I'm now super happy with it. Uh, and I think though, um, when you have a unit that it's hard to find situations to play it, and, and when you find those situations, you're not super happy. I think it's more like a C tier unit. But yeah, I'm still learning these factions. I might change my opinion in the future. And I think that's all for the new factions. So let's jump uh, to the factions that are already present because I changed a little my mind on some of this. Um, so where where I, I mean just. The fact that I'm not decided yet, yeah, uh, I'm. I think I, I think this is the moment where some people might <clears throat> might might be surprised because I'm going to put the fighter on a menace, and I'll be able to say, "What do you think the fighter is better than the actionist? I mean, do you even know who to play somewhere worse? <laughs> I know there are a lot of people going to think like that. Uh, I don't understand the arguments. I just think the fighter. I, I, if you if you know a little about uh, me playing tournaments, you know that I like to play Tundra Arcs a lot. It's probably my I, I consider it my best faction, and I think the factor is very very good. I mean, it, it does. I know some people don't like it because um sometimes it does nothing. The problem is that when it does, sometimes it's very crazy what it does, and I think because uh for that reason uh yeah I really like them. Despite uh, that, I'm not sure it's any minus because I can be convinced it's here. Or it's here. I, I can be like if you want to argue that it's a bit tire, I mean don't 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 waste your time because yeah, maybe it's a bit tired. I'm just going to put it here for now. But that's I tomorrow if you ask me tomorrow, maybe you will say it's a bit tire. I wasn't even sure where to put them right now. So yeah, I mean that's why there are eight minutes. Because okay? I think it's a balance, but you can convince me easily that they go below. Um, yeah, I think the fighter um, is hard to use, but sometimes in some situations, especially if you're they just win games. Uh, sometimes it's very crazy what they do. Uh, uh, maybe you 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 can't have the luck, but yeah, um, I think they are very strong. If you're a little lucky. And they're not super awful when 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 they miss, right? Obviously, they're not ideal. 
obviously I'm a little maybe biased by, by the fact that uh, a lot of times I just use them with uh, Grognik influence where they shine the best. Uh, next one are the Frost Shamans. Frost Shamans are the core unit of the Turn Dogs, and I think they're pretty solid. I'm going to put it on. There, this stylus is left order from left to right. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of the bottom. Um, again, uh, I, ha I might have be having the same problem that with the fighter in the. Uh, I'm very biased because the whole deck is supportive of Sha of the Frost Shaman, but yeah, in the deck they are, they are just pretty strong units. Uh, they're for one life to give you for one magic to give you a lot of life, and they hit pretty often. Uh, they are very scary, very hard to deal with. Uh, they if, if you in getting grease, its deck can very easily just feel kind of unfair. So I think they work as tightly as they supposed to work. Um, I wanted to say a little more about the fighter that maybe I I, I think maybe when you trigger them, uh, I think they should move two spaces. But uh, you know what? I mean to move them to be tired because of that. <laughs> See, I, I I'm getting over, over the the. I'm just thinking what I do to video. I'm not I'm not even sure. But let's let's move them to be tired. Um, so yeah, this is uh where. I think I think I think they they should they should, they should when when forced they should be able to force two spaces. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to to find uh, a good use of them. Uh, so yeah, that's the shaman. Uh, the next one is uh, the, the smasher. The smasher to me is a very easy. You know, the smasher have been all over the place in my opinion. Uh, but the, right now I have a very easy opinion of them. The, the, the ability to, for a common for Shastri Magic to put four mini dice on the board is really, really strong. Uh, just allow you to put much more dice for uh, to the opponent without really just doing that much effort. Uh, a slash is deceptively not so bad because a lot of the damage and even now comes from direct damage and Smasher just for the purpose of direct damage is six life and then it's just kind of unfair. And I don't know, it's like, uh, it's very hard to one shot the smashers, right? So, uh, like, even if you have like a four uh, melee unit, you're not going to to one shot the smashers. So it's very easy to survive two turns. Actually, for two turns, you can just hit for four. It's it's I think it's pretty pretty good. So yeah, they're expensive, but the well worth their time. I think they're where they should be. Very good units, uh, as they should be. And finally, we have, uh, yeah, the Tundra Charger. The Tundra Charger, I think, is an easy B for me. Um, yeah, I mean, it has uses. I like to have them. I used to, I'm using them more than I used to do. Uh, I'm really like, I really like to use them with For Glory. Uh, you just throw them away, they hit for four and then disappear, and you don't give them magic. But yeah, I mean, it's it's very hard to fall below B when you have zero cost to shoot. That alone just is kind of that. But the ability is kind of meh because when you make have to make them one life, especially it's very easy to just kill them without an ability without using an attack, and that's uh, and I think Vladruch should. Uh, should, should we not only when you summon them but at any time then i think that will make them a balance or you should be able to force it one or two spaces right i think it needs more but it doesn't need that that much more uh they're still very functional i use them quite a bit uh yeah i think they, they work and that's why they are mb despite they need some buff uh i think that's all for the tuner arcs uh let's move to Finding out the Russian Guardian, the, the core unit of the Russian Guardian, and I think they are balanced. I think they do all what they have to do. They are, they they have low life for its cost, but they do so much. They do solid damage. They shove. They have engage. They do, yeah, yeah. You are paying premium. That's the difference. To see, this is why, or how I decide for something like the Machinus. I, when I compare with the Machinus, I think the Russian Guardian is just clearly superior. Um, 
I, I think that's so much. Um, yeah, it, they are technically the same, but I think the Russia Gordon does so much more. Uh, I really love to see it. I know some people think it's kind of weak, which surprises me. I mean, maybe I should debate those people uh, to try to understand them more. But um, yeah, I can't clearly disagree. Shav is super powerful. Engage is okay. But it's basically 2 4 with a very powerful ability and, a, and an, an extra bonus that you don't need. But you, you're glad it's there. So next one is Timber Archer. Timber Archer to me is just. Um, uh kind of I, i'm going to surprise some people here it's, it's it's i used to i used to think i, I don't think it's pretty stylish i put them on b but um i'm now i think it's more an a I, I, maybe that's why i'm going to put them on, on, on a menace but uh yeah um I think they are balanced. Uh, I think because really I've been using them. They do, the ability of quick shot is that allows you to do so many things, open so many paths, uh, so many tricks, so many ways to save with attacks. Um, I'm valuing in more and more quick shots. So yeah, I, despite I used them to put them on B now, I think it's uh, they're, I think they're balanced. I think they're fine. Maybe they are a little little lacking, which is enough for a minute. But I'm still going to put them here. But still, uh, I'm surprised. I've been surprised uh, with Amber Archer. Uh, it, it, it's not... Be careful, because it's not a unit that you're going to just freely just throw them away, right? I think uh, the, you really need to use Quick Shot to take value out of them. Uh, I mean, I'm using more than just one extra damage to a unit. I mean, they allow you to ping a unit while they attack another or open a path. But when you do that, they're very, very good. So next is the Ember Mage. I think I'm going to surprise no one, but I'm going to see the Ember Mage are D tier. I really don't like this unit. I think it's pretty bad. I mean, sure it has uses, sure. I mean, sometimes I summon them, especially when I don't have something else. Uh, in the guide, I put them the uses of Ember Mage, which is to boost, uh, to give Ember Beast reach. Sure. I mean, when you have Holias, they're okay. But I just don't like this unit. Uh, and the reason is mostly that, like I said before, when I was talking about the Smasher, there are a lot of direct damage. I mean, you, and when you direct damage, just make them pretty sad. And yeah, I just don't like them. Um, doing two, I mean, th th this unit doesn't do anything, right? I mean, it only does two damage. Okay, so it's tough to kill, right? It doesn't have an utility, right? So it's tough to kill because that's the idea. Well, actually, no, because if you have direct that only if you have like four attack value units, otherwise, you should damage, especially with direct damage, it doesn't do that much. And and against attacks, yes, you need two attacks, but let's, let's imagine the shaman, right? The shaman has four life, and that shaman also needs two attacks, except except against four dice uh, attacks. So, yeah. Uh, I don't like this unit. I think it's too weak. Uh, Ember Beast. The Ember Beast, I think, is actually balanced. Uh, I'm going to put them kind of the bottom because the Ember Beast is one of those units that you're kind of. A lot of the times you look at Ember Beast in the hand and are like, uh, and are like, yeah, this this unit doesn't do. It's not what you need. I don't like this unit. The problem with Pimbrist has destroyed games. Sometimes it's just amazing what it does. And I think it's a high high variance unit. And sometimes you look at the Ember Beast and I'm like, this is sad. But other times you just look at the Ember Beast and say, okay, I guess I went the game right here. Because uh, and when you put those two things together, you have a balanced unit in my opinion. And that's what it has to do. It's a very it's not the most versatile unit, but it has a high a ceiling that breaks games, right? Um, so yeah, that's the, the Ember Beast, in my opinion. Um, and with that, we finish with the starter set. And uh, now all we have left is the master set. And um, let's see what happens. Oh, okay. I'm okay with it, with the goblins. The goblins, the climber, I'm going to go very fast on this because it's just an a i, I think they're a little stronger than this the climber haven't surprised i mean what they do for snakes yeah i'm going to put it here i mean what it does for snakes is pretty crazy um 
I, I obviously it's more scary because um sneaks, right? But it's still like I said with the, with the bandit, I mean still life, still life, still cost to life, you don't need much to be good. And the ability is pretty good, you can sneak in uh <laughs> no pun intended, I guess. Um, everywhere and just it's super annoying unit to get rid of because terror cost for life is very good. So yeah, it's pretty much balanced on that. It's terror cost for life. You don't need like bigger ability and the ability is not big, but just good good enough. And uh, that's how you have uh, a balanced unit. And uh, that's it for it. Uh, the clinger. I'm going to surprise people again. I think because I used to put clinger and be tire. And I don't think it longer, but I, I don't longer put it here. I'm going to put it actually on a minus tire. So what happened? What, what changed? Um, the reason I don't like the clinger is because I feel that it's not worth, I felt it's not worth You have a unit that kind of forces you to put the gates in certain positions to be able to play the game, right? If you have clingers in the deck and you want to use them, you need a gate, you need to put them to the right position. That's still really true. The problem is, I changed my mind and that it's totally worth it. Why? Because the Clinger not only has extra reach, but it saves you movement. Especially in that deck, like, like the Gay Goblin saving that movement is crazy good. I mean, it just allows you to send units to the front, like, <laughs> more efficiently than you should. And in addition to that, it can reach places where it shouldn't go. I mean, you have both, yes, um, you need the gate, but it's totally worth it. And still need to put a minus, I still think it's not complete. Uh, I still have doubts about my new position, that's worth it. I mean, I may to change my mind, that's why it's a minus, but I think it's balanced now. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm going to... Um, going to put here. Uh, I think it's yeah, the slinger, right? Yeah, the slinger. I don't know. I think the slinger is kind of okay here. I think I I have mixed feelings about the slinger. The slinger is. I mean, it really does a lot. I mean, it's just put so much pressure to kill it. If you don't kill it, it just adds so much value. The problem is with just one life, it ends too easy to kill. So I have mixed feelings uh, of this power level. I, sometimes I feel it has to have one more life, but maybe maybe it will be too strong. I don't know. Uh, because of that doubt, I think they are balanced kind of, but I put them in eight minutes because I have many doubts of this unit. So yeah, when, when I have you doubts of the our unit, just maybe maybe being too weak, maybe I think eight minutes is the proper tire. And so it's where I have it. Uh, so next one, and final one for the um, Cape Goblins is the Beast Rider. I'm going to again be a little surprising here. I'm going to put the Beast Rider on a plus. So what happened here? Uh, I've been surprised on games how much impact the Beast Rider has. I don't, th I don't think it ever will reach this. I think, <laughs> but I just feel it's, it's 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 maybe a little unfair unit. Uh, the reason is, it's first, uh, you're not sad with the Beast Rider, the Beast Rider, or, or maybe yes, but the ability to reach places where you shouldn't with four spaces is, is good. And the fact that you hit for four melee is pretty strong. Uh, the thing is, what, what I wanted to say is that you're never really sad with the Beast Rider. Like, it's just, that's quite a lot. Like, compared with Ember Beast, or something, you know, eh, I don't know if that, Because it's very easy to reach the situation where you hit for four. And if you are going to hit for four, it's pretty good. In addition to that, in addition to hitting for four, you're just moving two or three, three or four spaces, sorry. And, uh, yeah, and sometimes, I mean, if you don't kill it, you can move again to, to three or four spaces. Um, and hit for four again, and I've seen this happen. So I don't know. Uh, sometimes I feel the beast rider is too much, and I think uh, secondly, uh, a lot of the power of the Gabe Goblins is uh, reliant on beast rider running better than people realize when they play with it. Uh, yeah, I, I think the same a, a, a plus because I think it's bad. I, I was last time I was an a, a tire, 
but I think um maybe we have we are missing how good Freddy the Beast Friday is. And I think because of that, uh, A plus Tyra is a good fit for it. Um, so moving on to the next faction. Bender's Wind Mage. Well, um, no, it's no secret for anyone. I think Wind Mage is still at this point the best unit in the game in, in the game. It's just too versatile. It's just uh the problem with the with the Wind Mage is that it does everything. I mean, you never, 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 never are with the Wind Mage. Yeah, I, I don't think that I'm going to use this unit. It's just the ability is super, super versatile. It's just does too many things. While still having decent stats. But that's not all. It has a good ceiling. Sometimes it does crazy things, right? Sometimes it allows you to do like game winning moves. Uh, it can allow you to do get a lot of advantage. So it's a super versatile unit with a super high ceiling. Right? Uh, it has no weakness and too many strengths. And because of that, I think it's the, right now the best unit in the game. And hopefully we never see a unit better than the Wine Mage ever. Because I think... Let's hope this is the ceiling the Summer War units ever reach. Um, yeah. The next one is the Wine Archer. I think the Wine Archer is just balance. Uh, there's not much to say. I'm going to put it on the bottom. Uh, no, I'm going to put it a little bit like here. I think it's a little... I'm going to switch this. I think I'm going to, to change my opinion a little. <laughs> or the right... I mean, it's super close. As I say. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wasting everybody's time. But I think the Warrior Archer is super solid. I've been proving solid. Um, yes, it does a lot of things, a lot of potential damage, a lot of, of great defensive, easy to kill if reach, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It just does everything that he needs to do. Um, uh, it, if you want damage and you want speed, and or, or you better get one boat, you, the Wind Archer is there for you and it works. So next one is the Deceiver, which is a, a unit that has been changing my mind back and forth, but always on the uh, high strength power. And I still think it's on the S tire. I think uh, this unit did, uh, might not seem so strong to some people because it needs to work in tandem with the, with the Wine Mage, but or when you other units because on its own doesn't do much. But it's the best, most eff effective defensive unit in the game, and maybe that's a little too much when when you. Have four life for one magic. You don't need to do much in the defense department. That's a very good ratio of life. The problem is you have stupefy and you have engage. So now you are you're just controlling movement. And then in addition to that, which also combos with with, with other abilities, you have stupefy, which makes people do a little it does too much control for one magic, in my opinion. I mean obviously three magic. But for one magic unit. So yeah. That's the deceiver does too much. Uh for a defensive unit. But yeah, I think nobody feels this is oppressive. Like I may be the only one that's considered this unit that strong. So clearly it's not a NASAS unit. Uh right? Uh, it's, but I still people miss how good of a defensive unit is, how efficient it is. I think this unit could cost three and people will still use it. That's how good I think it is. Um, yeah, and use it a lot. So, moving on, the Mind Witch. Mind Witch is it's a unit that I mean, it seems to be getting stronger every set because, uh, yeah, sure, a one cost for three, two. I don't think it's a good unit if, if you remove the text, but it has text and it has a super relevant text. And not only copying alien units, which will be good enough if you will copy alien units, if you copy when, when you copy the Wind Mage. It's good enough. I mean, when you copy Wine Archer, it's sometimes good enough. The problem is, you can copy some abilities that you shouldn't be able to copy, right? You, when you copy double, uh, double attack, you copy extra damage. It sometimes makes you feel very... I mean, again, I almost don't put this unit here because, because I want to put three breakers unit here. But honestly, I don't think... I think it's balanced because... It needs to to cop. I mean, it needs to. You kind of kind of play around this, but it's, it's sometimes when you cap, it's sometimes you say, "Wow, it's unfair. It's so strong. You can become like ridiculous. It's just it's just kind kind of a bit too strong." Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say except that when you get certain units, 
It's just, it makes no sense. Um, and yeah, that's why I think it's an A+, plus and you can business and S tire, but yeah, I think this is where I put it right now. Uh, the final, no, there is no final units for the Rikers. The next one is the next faction, which is the Border Archer. Which I, I know it's going to be, uh, some people consider the Border Archer like an S tire. I, I don't, I, I think the Border Archer, I actually, as you see, I put them like right here. I'm not super, uh, actually, uh, uh okay i'm, I'm gonna do this actually uh the border archer is not uh i think it's that strong i think people overvalue her because um they don't often they often you have to use abua to boost her and people don't overvalue that that's, that's a very step cost if you have to use your summer ability i mean yes the deck is designed about that but that that's a problem and, and so well I, it just works so well with the deck uh, so people overvalue what it does, you, but you need the extra work, right? You need the chance of entangling, you need the chance of power, you need a Bua boost or the chance of load to, to work, but that that you're, you're paying a cost when you need those things to work. So I still think it's a, a great unit, that's why it's an A+, plus. I mean, the double attack, it's very strong. Being able to do two attacks is not the same than having four AB. You can split the attack where you want. You can save the attack. Sometimes you kill the target and you just don't do the super the double attack, saving the boost. Sure, I understand the code good it is. I don't think it's as good as some people believe. I've seen some people say it's the best unit in the game, which I think uh, with, with some of the units uh, do you see here to me to be kind of crazy, but I mean, some people that claim that are better players than me. So what do you know, right? But that's my opinion. I have to give my opinion. My opinion is the Border Archer is on the top end of power, but it's not like an S tire. I, I don't think it's our power. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if I had the magic one, when I talk about the, the magic one, I, I have to talk about the power to change things. I will not change a thing. I will keep the Border Archer to this because I think it's balanced. So, uh, moving on. Lioness, I think uh, time has proven that the lioness is fine. I, I used to think that maybe it was a, exactly too weak, but I think it's fine. I don't think it's as strong as some people think. Uh, you need, because same that the Mortal Archer, you need help. Like, if you just send it as a 3 3, I mean, if you just summon it and then attack a unit, and it has to be a unit, that, that's important because sometimes you want to attack a gate, you only get one boost and it's a 3 3. And then it kill, died and it did nothing right so the real power of the lioness is when you boost it when you boost it you get it to four life and then it's easier to survive and if it just survives then it starts to snowball and then suddenly it's crazy but you need the work and you need to put the work i'm saying it's bad now i'm saying it's a balanced unit because of because of that because of, despite sometimes you see it very very strong you need to work to get there and i think it's it's, uh, it's balanced <laughs> Let's say that. Let's say like that. It's therefore this uh what it needs to be for its power. So we're nice Uh maybe I'm going to surprise some people here. I don't know, but the rhinoceros is going to move yes to the front of the ace plus tire. I've been more and more surprised about the power of the rhinoceros. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the next time I make a tile is dance here. That's why it's an A plus. I still think it's balanced. I still think it's balanced. But I've been very surprised how oppressive this unit can be when you bust it, when you put several boosts. I think this unit is more important than the Border Archer. Uh, when you put, uh, the problem is when you put one one counter on the Rhinoceros, I think it's balanced. The problem is you can put more counters. When you put two or three, sometimes you see the Rhino just trampling several units and you think about it, you can kind of sometimes do like one boost, uh, one damage per boost. And if you think about that, that's pretty crazy. Uh, so, yeah, and in addition to that, to, to reach places, to, to, the other reason I think it's very strong is the ability to steal positions of the Rhino, you, like, when you can move for you, you kind of think that position is safe, especially in front of your gate, and suddenly the Rhino broom goes through, trample everything, doing damage, and then suddenly secures the front gate position. Oof, that's, that's pretty scary. Honestly, I'm starting to think Rhino might be OP. But I'm there. I'm there. I'm just, just the same as the fighter that I'm moving here. The rhino can be easily 
be here it's very easily do i want to leave you here just for the for the talk maybe i'm going to leave you here because i don't know it's just you can change um yeah depending on what minute you ask me i can put it here or here so yeah it's there um that that's actually big part of, of the power of, of abua uh spirit mage uh i'm going to put it um i'm liking spirit mage less and less so i'm going to put it here um uh, i feel that yeah it's spirit mage it's always a very main unit it's just it's not something i can say from every i mean every unit i can see here there are moments where i say wow what a good unit i mean it's this fair i, I think that's part of what summer power Summer Wars average power is, right? This units, if you pick any unit here, there are something like, like I, I am thinking, is this fair, really? Because it seems unfair. But when you think about it more, you say, yeah, it's fair. But the Spirit Mage, I never get the feeling. It's always like, well, yeah, I guess, I guess it works. I guess it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the stats are fine. Uh, with the ability, I mean, with the ability, it's just, yeah, you get one boost. I guess, I don't know, it's just, I'm very impressed. So, I'm very exactly it's, it's a retire, but honestly, on the other hand, you're almost fine with it. It's just so meh, but also never bad. Like, this units where often you just are like, uh, I think I overpaid. You never feel like you overpaid with Spirit Mage. The problem is that you never feel so you underpaid. You overpaid, you underpaid. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you get my point. So, eh, I think this is a, a proper position for it. So yeah, we, we are ending with the uh, sun elves and citadel knight. Okay, I'm going to get very controversial again here. Um, because I I, well, I used to say in the past that the citadel knight is uh the best unit in the game, and I don't think that anymore. And not only that, I don't think it's an S tier anymore. I don't think it's OP. I actually think it's fine. I would change maybe my mind in the future with deck building. I've not played much deck building because. In paper, and also something in practice, is it like that knight is kind of unfair in how you, you can just attack what you want, and the knight kind of tells you what you have to attack. And you have to attack a, a card that has a good life. But that's only good when you protect something valuable, and the problem is that Sarah deck doesn't have anything valuable to protect really that much, other than Sarah. Uh, and I think that's part of the problem where, where we may be missing. So, I'm torn on my opinion, current opinion of the knight right now. Um, but... The, I have that. So yeah, I'm just going to put it, and it's going to be here. I still think that secondly, um, might be an S, but I'm not convinced as I used to be. So I'm going to just uh, I don't know if it's a it's 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 a matter of Sarah underperforming and not having the right cards to go along with the knight. I think when we play with the building, I'm going to make a better idea of that. But right now, um, yeah, that's where I put uh the knight. So I'm going to keep it there for now. Um, so what else? What else? What else? What else? The Citadel Archer. Okay, this this is a card that I even I can less and less. I'm going to just straight go for it. I'm just put it on the top of let's see. Um, the Citadel Archer has been worse and worse for me. And the reason for the Citadel Retro being so bad is this number one. The problem is, and it's part of the problem with the deck, is that, yes, it's hard to kill the Archer, but do you care to kill a unit that only does one damage? Yeah, sure, the Light ability is very powerful. It's extremely powerful ability. But you're having extremely powerful ability when a unit that has one attack. And the thing is, when you run out of ammo, you're left with nothing. You have it. You have it in a deck with healing, but it's, it's not worth to kill this unit because you run out of ammo, and then you are left with one. If this was a two, and I'm going to straight say that they wish this unit was a three cost for two attack. If it were three cost for two attack, it will be different because after you spend all your ammo or after you heal it, you still have a relevant attack that finish off units, and more important, which is the real problem, is that sometimes. You don't need the power of Hour of Light. Sometimes you, there is a like a slinger there, right? That you want to finish off with the Saital Archer. And even attacking with one is risky because you might miss. So you, you it's not even good. The problem is when you don't use the light, the Hour of Light, it's 
sword is, is useless and uh, you can't afford to do that right you have a useless ability to so yeah if this was the three cost to attack our life the, the third archer would be fine but this one attack it just makes it too too bad to to you need to make to acquire the light power uh and when, while you're trading it it's actually fine but it doesn't compass it all the time when you don't trigger it and it's just basically useless. Right? So yeah, there's that. That's why I put it on the bottom. Still, you say, okay, um, it's it's better than the sniper and the diver. Well, yes, because when you trigger the light powers, when you you you, you summon it very early on, it's actually very scary. You just do three or four attacks, it's very hard to take down. And suddenly you say, Wow, this unit is great. But it's a very narrow situation when you you have very narrow situation. Um, I think every, any other moment than like the second turn or third turn at best, it's it's absolute trash. So yeah, that's why I'm, I think it's uh, a C tire. Um, the paladin, uh, uh, I'm going to put it. Um, I, I don't know what to put it. Um, I'm going to put it here. And maybe oh my god let me do I'm, I'm going to i'm not ready to decide uh yeah i'm going to put it here um uh, the problem with my problem with the paladin i used to think uh, yeah i mean that that start line is it's great and it's hard to think that something is not balanced just by having the start line and you don't need much on ability the problem is that the ability is really non-existent yeah sometimes i mean yeah sometimes you draw and that's fine but that's fine I mean, it doesn't compensate and uh, let's compare it with the Sentinel. I think the Sentinel... Uh, let's say it like this. When you uh, draw a car, you don't, often, you don't always draw a car. And when you draw, you don't do much. Yes, the Sentinel, you don't always have uses for that. But when you do, it's extremely powerful. So that's how it should be. I think the session is not strong enough. I think the session should draw a car plus uh, a, a number, a car for each uh, special role. That would be a, a balance a unit. Uh, I, I don't prefer the factor. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let, let's go with that. I think it's a B tire. I'm not. I I, I, don't, I don't love uh, the Paladin. I, I think it's. I think it's still useful. It's B tire. It's still useful. I'm just. I haven't going to be here. <laughs> I think. Um. Yeah. I'm I'm not super happy with the paladin. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next, the priest. Yeah, uh, poor poor Sarah. No, no, you try to find why part of the Sarah weakness. Uh, like I mean, the commons is just not the, the only good commons to sit on night. Uh, I think the priest is uh, a B tire. Um, I don't know which. I think I like more the charger. The charger. I think they're very close. Both are zero cost to chew with a meh ability. But I think the Charger ability is a little better. Uh, the heal is a little underrated, but still not good enough. I, I think I think when you roll a special, it should heal two, two bones, wounds, uh, to be balanced. Uh, I, I think right now, too often, you don't heal enough. Uh, and often, you want to just heal two... Like, you want to heal a unit with two life, and... Then you never get the three life bonus when you do you hit uh roll good and you're kind of wasting the healing. So yeah, I, I think um it's uh I think that the priest is a bit tired mostly because it's a zero cost for Chu Chu and that that's kind of just enough. Uh, the ability has some uses, but it's like <laughs> uh yeah, I think it's a bit tired. Um so let's move. I have two factions left. Uh, that's uh, the Underarch uh, the Under Archer, which I think actually the Under Archer has the same problem that other units. I think it's like the taken worst uh, common in the game right now. Uh, spoilers for the other commons, but you knew that uh, none of this is going to be like it's C tire. I mean, so whatever. Uh, the Under Archer is uh, it's actually very strong in a way because when you revive it with Red Talus, but if you think it on its own. The stats are very like two cost three two it's not good that really is super powerful but i don't think it's not powerful enough to compensate 
this poor stats. Uh, you still sometimes use it because the ability is so powerful that in the right situation, you're willing to pay less. But in general, you just prefer to spend your magic in other ways. Um, your Talus, you still see play the Archer a lot because you can reanimate it. But, and it's very easy to reach where you need to do, uh, even if Talus is far away. But yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's kind of weak. Um, even if I think nobody's going to question that. Uh, I'm going to, under the cover, it's going to be the next surprise. It's going to be a surprise that's not a surprise. It's going to be a surprise because until the previous tier, I just said it's an A tier unit. And now I changed my mind. I think a lot of people changed my mind. I think it's just an S. Uh, Tended Carter has been doing a lot of work for, for um, Alien Kingdom. And the reason is, I think this is an A unit. When it attacks enemy units. The problem with real massive power to occur, I think everybody knows by now, is the ability to revive each other. Uh, it's kind. Of, it's it's really unfair, and especially when you compare it with the priest. It's that that's the same. It just gives you two life, to a unit. You you take any unit of yours with one life, and then suddenly it has three life and becomes a carrier. It's, 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 what? <laughs> and you can do it. You don't need to risk your unit. You don't need. You just can do it in the bag safely. So it gives, it gives the. You know, it, it can be even better. You, you can convince me this is the best unit in the game right now. I'm just. It's keep, it keeps going up and up value um uh, it's just how fair what it does uh it just allows you to heal units without exposing yourself um use your attacks uh, you just have two ways to use your attacks uh, the mind just heal something with the carrier it just allows you to kill a unit that just attacked and then you attack it again with that unit and often that unit that you attacked it's bound and now with the carrier you just get another carrier it's just yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's it's unfair at this point. And so let's is irrelevant when you attack your own units. So, yeah, I think I mean if you can convince me, I can't even put it here really. Uh, just just for for the content, I'm going to put it here right now. Yeah, that that's that's how strong I think it is. I maybe it's better than one 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 match. Who knows? Um, I I don't like it that it works like that, but that's the reality of uh Retalus. And I think teaching it a lot is putting Retalus. I think it's, uh, I'm going to talk about, but a, a lot of people are ranking Retalus pretty high in the tier list I see on, on Summer Wars Zone. And I think, I think no, I'm pretty sure it's because this unit is a uh, Fallen Kingdom deck. Uh, and again, don't be confused, it's not for the ability to kill other units, which is fine. It's the ability to kill your own units and kill them. And that's just unfair to me. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to say with the Under Carter. The Under Water, um, I think it's just, that's what it does. I'm going to put it here on the bottom, of, but still, it's a balanced unit. It does what it has to do. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, it's hard to get to the three or four that makes it good, but sometimes you get to seven, and then you're like, what? What I was saying, right? Balanced units need to have this moment where, the summer war, where you just, it is fair. And you have that moment with the water, right? When you hit for seven, is it, is it fair? Uh, yes, it's fair because it's hard to get there. And that's why I'm just kind of the bottom, but it gets onto seven attack enough that I'm happy with the water. Um, yeah. Alpha Cultist, um, like I said, you, when you have two costs and two, at, uh, and two life, two attacks, you don't need match to be good. Uh, that stability is good enough. Uh, yes. Completely. Um, I, I, I don't know where to put. I, I know it's balance. I think it's fine. I know where. Let's I mean to put it here. But you, you can. It doesn't matter to other. Uh, I think the cool this is it's just a super solid unit. Very hard to trade. It's just um very good poker. Like excellent to sacrifice. Uh, sometimes it does a lot when you sacrifice it. The next units. Uh, it's never really bad. It's just. What a good unit. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I think that's all for the Fallen Kingdom. And you're only left with the most uh, powerful uh, faction in the game. Uh, let's rank the Frost Mage. Frost Mage uh, been, been more and more scary. I mean, Frost Mage needs a lot of work to get there. But uh, really, it's... <laughs> Uh, they are very scary. I mean, I said many times, one cost for four life is already very good, very hard to kill. And yes, it needs work to get there. But 
uh, like to attack for four, but when you do, it's just it's just kind of unfair. What I will say, um, yeah, uh, in, it only works in the deck because far I can move structure so much, but it's so strong in the deck. It's so strong. I think I think it's a very strong unit. But it needs so much work that I think it's balanced. But you can convince me that maybe this unit is a little too strong. Uh, because I have that slight doubt, I prefer to put an ace plus, but I think it's a balanced unit. I mean, it does enough. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about... Uh, I think the bandit. Let's see, I can move the units around, but that's not very important. Um, yeah, I think the frost mage is... It's very very strong and almost scary strong so what's the next uh, the next is the ice golem uh i'm going to also put the ice golem up there i'm, I'm going to be like i'm starting to value that the, the fact that they are slow is kind of irrelevant because we, we you can summon units out of them and because of that uh it doesn't matter if they're slow, right? I mean, if you're in front of them, you, they can reach you. They're summoning a unit from them. I don't know if that makes sense. The ability of being a structure is very powerful. Um, and yeah, I think I think I think they're I think they're balanced, but I think there is a risk that they're actually a little too strong. Strong. Uh, maybe they should be three cost six life. Uh, it won't happen. I mean, forget it. Nobody's going to change the top because it's not that uh, uh, overpowered. That if it is overpowered, I'm not saying it's overpowered, but if it it sits as overpowered, it's not as much that it's going to ever receive a nerf. I think. But yeah, I, I think I think it's a super solid unit. Um, the fact that you can build them instead of summoning it's also very strong. It has too many bonuses that the slow it doesn't seem to compensate. But on the other hand, it doesn't feel like wow, what 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 unfair card. Like right, it, it only hits for two. I don't know. Um because I I have so many doubts I'm going to put on ace plus, but I don't think it reached the S tire. But maybe this. Uh the final is to build a cavalry. I mean it, to me it's a very good. I'm going to put it in ace bonus. Because I think it's a balanced card, but it's it's lacking a little something. Uh I don't know, it's just uh, I don't think it's lacking enough. As to receive a buff, because when you honestly when against commons, when you trample, you're spending a move to do one damage, and that's pretty strong actually, and can get through you. And I mean, the ability is more relevant than sometimes I think in paper. Uh, and the stats are good. I don't know, it's just I can't say I can't say it. I, the same thing the spirit bench, right? I am never, never say wow, this is a bad unit, but I'm never like wow, what a good unit. Sometimes we're fighting commons, I, I'm like wow. But I don't know. I think it's a balance unit, but it's it's like 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 definitely on the lower part of the balance units. So I'm going to put it um here. Um yeah, and finally I think uh this unit is pretty pretty good. I think it's an undervalued. I don't know, I think it's balanced. I'm not sure exactly where to put it. Uh I need to put it here. Um I think it's one of the best to their cost, and people don't see the problem with this car. Uh, or the problem, the power of this card, which is, like I said, I see the cost for Choo Choo is, uh, it's pretty good. The problem is, once you get boost, which is going to be the first stone, you kind of need to target it. Because if you don't, it, and, and after attacking, then she'll switch to another unit as an axe, the value is pretty, pretty high. So you kind of forced to attack it. And sometimes you see this guy heading in the back with the boost and it's very scary actually to 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 put down certain units, especially a champ or or the summoner. So I think a lot of the power of the polar dwarf kind of dwarfs what the items do, and that's why some people miss how good they are. But I think they're pretty good. Obviously, I don't think they're OP. I mean, I put them on balance, but yeah. Uh, well, I think that's every common so far. I, I was thinking, wow, if this took like an hour, uh, I'm. Future titles are going to get longer and longer. I oh, know. I will. I will. I will start to never get out in an hour. I guess I will start to go faster over units. I mostly focus on new units as they're released, or maybe units I change my mind. Uh, because yeah, this got very long. But um, anyway, that's all about the comments of summer rewards.